What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing former Detroit Lions head coach Jim Caldwell. And you may be asked, why are we talking about Jim Caldwell? Well, because that's pretty much 99% of Detroit Lions social media. Let's get it started. You no, know, I got a shout out to the uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know, Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome in everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, as you guys can see from the board, Caldwell, the answer with a question mark. Okay, was Jim Caldwell the answer for the Detroit Lions? That is the question of the day. And I want you guys to put it in the comment section below. But please, please let me go through my video before you answer that. Just because I'm just going to throw out some numbers and maybe some thoughts or different, different ideas. Maybe to look at certain things here. Now, ultimately, that question is subjective and it's really up to whoever it is, right? This is kind of an opinion based, but I will throw out facts just to kind of back up both sides here. Because I think there is an argument for both sides. Definitely, I think there's an argument for both sides here. And again, you saying the answer, that really isn't a specific thing. That's subjective, right? You think something's the answer. Someone may else also may think that's not the answer, right? So was Jim Caldwell the answer for the Detroit Lions? And I thought, you know, it was time to talk about this, okay? It's, it's not going to be necessarily a straight-up comparison between Matt Patricia and Jim Caldwell. That's not what this video is. It's more just about Jim Caldwell and, you know, his tenure with the Detroit Lions and whether or not he should have more time and, and everything like that, whether or not, you know, he was the answer for the Detroit Lions as an organization. Organization. That's what we're going to be touching on today because that's pretty much been social media. After Matt Patricia in one of his press conferences said a quote, which I took it as not that big of a deal. Like when I first heard him say that, I didn't think anything of it. But then all of a sudden social media got a hold of it and it's been a problem. And the reason it's been such a big problem is because the Lions are one in three. And when you look at his all-time record, it's not very good with the Lions. Very easy to kind of go off on Matt Patricia and, uh, you know, really pick apart his words. Because Matt Patricia was asked this, and this was very soon after the loss to New Orleans Saints. So he was already not happy. He said this. He said, when I came to Detroit, there was a lot of hard work to do uh, when I came in. And I think we're trying to do that. That, that's pretty much the quote. That's like not exact, but that's just pretty much what he said. All right. And I hear that. I'm like, okay, that's coaches talk. Of course. Yeah, there was work to do because it's not like the Lions won a Super Bowl before he got here. There was work to do, right? That's my thought. I wasn't really going that too detailed into it. But then all of a sudden, Dan Orlowski and former NFL players, they're going off on this. They're going off on Patricia and they're all backing up Jim Caldwell. And uh, I just thought we'd talk about it in today's video because they're just mad. They're like, Matt Patricia, there was, you know, no work to be done. You ruined this. And, you know, Jim Caldwell should have got more time or whatever their beliefs are. They think that, you know, there wasn't work to be done. Personally, I think there was work because, of course, unless you're winning a Super Bowl, there's work to be done. But I can see why they're upset because, you know, Lions record has gotten worse since Matt Patricia has been here. There's no denying that. Now, have there been big factors? Yes, but it hasn't gotten worse. So it has gotten worse. And so far, the season one and three doesn't help your case at all. So that alone makes it very difficult uh, for a guy like Matt Patricia to be defended. But we're not focusing on Matt Patricia. We're focusing on Jim Caldwell, okay? So let's talk about it. So we've heard from a couple of players. The Donna Kitsu uh, said he didn't get the opportunity to put his finger on the team, and he believes the community fully embraced Jim Caldwell when he was here. Stephen Tullock said he had the team on the right track. We know Glover Quinn uh, was really likes Jim Caldwell, and I respect that. All these players saying that I completely respect that completely understand where they're coming from especially if that was your coach it makes sense and i know you know some people look at you know dron Harmon and they're stepping they're you're kind of standing up for the coach and people are like well you know that's just because he's trying to get a job well of course they're all trying to get a job i mean everybody does that but at the same time, they may believe in Matt Patricia. I mean, I, I can't be the one to say that they don't, right? So I think that's what we're seeing here, right? Former players that were on the team. The Donican Sue was only here for one year. He was only here for that 2014 season, but he believes he was the answer. Uh, Stephen Tulloch was released by the Lions in 2016. And then, of course, Glover Quinn, he ultimately retired after one year with Matt Patricia uh, as the Lions head coach. Um, and he was not very happy with Matt Patricia, just like Darius Slay. And Matt Patricia is not the most liked person, so it's, it's very easy for this stuff to kind of get kind of crazy. So let's speak about Jim Caldwell, right? Was he the answer now the one quote that i've taken a lot out of everyone's kind of saying is he was not given the opportunity and i think this is a very respectable argument with whoever you're honestly talking about okay because i feel like the quote he was not given the opportunity is pretty pretty fair to say when it comes to detroit lions organization historically okay because if you look at the lions organization not many coaches were given the opportunity to do their thing to turn things around it's usually a hey, two three years okay you're not successful you're gone and I'm not trying to say that just because I'm saying Patricia, you know, keep him for five years. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you can make the same case for Jim Caldwell as you can make for many former head coaches. And maybe they weren't the answer or maybe they were, but sometimes you just don't know because you didn't give the opportunity. I think it's fair to say that with a lot of coaches that they were not given the opportunity because Jim Caldwell, yes, four years. 
I think there's an argument to say that he should have gotten more years. And one of the biggest arguments and one of the easiest arguments to make, because it's a very valid argument, that's at the end of the day, all that matters is wins and losses. And when you look at Jim Caldwell's resume as a Lions head coach, he did not win a playoff game, right? He didn't have that playoff success, but he took us there twice and he had one of the best records that any coach has had leading the Lions organization. In four years, 36 and 28 with the Detroit Lions. Fortunately for Jim Caldwell, ultimately the reason he got fired was pretty much just because they got off to a pretty darn bad start and the people ahead of him, you know, basically got fired. So you had your general manager get fired, you had your offensive coordinator get fired, and you had your team president get fired. Now the now the offense coordinator was a little bit earlier, um, but your general manager and your team president were both fired during the 2015 season when the Detroit Lions got out to a one in seven start. A one in seven. The Lions started one in seven, zero oh and five on that year they were allowing over 30 points per game to their opponents and they just decided to fire a team people at the front office now Jim Caldwell he, they said he remained a coach but they fired the front office right so they fired all those guys up above him and then once they hired Bob Quinn Bob Quinn was ultimately going to go get his guy because well I mean he's going to get his guy and Bob Quinn's biggest reason he said for firing Matt Patricia shows because we didn't win the big games I know everybody says 97 wasn't good enough but Bob Quinn didn't say that Bob Quinn said it's because he didn't win the big games, meaning the teams over 500, right? We didn't beat the really good teams. That's what Bob Quinn said. And his record was 4-26 and against those. So at least he had some valid argument there to at least what he was saying. It, there were still some st stats to back that up. Matt Patricia has already beaten five teams over 500, but we know the overall record isn't very good. I don't want to get into all that, but I'm just telling you that the reason that Caldwell ultimately got fired is because, unfortunately, they got off to a very bad start, and the people above him, the front office, right, the people that can fire him, those guys all got moved out. So once Bob Quinn came in, he's going to go get his guy, right? It just makes sense to go get your guy with the same vision. So unfortunately for Caldwell, that's a huge reason that, you know, he ultimately was fired. Man, you know, that just kind of stinks because, you know, maybe Caldwell could have ended up being something great. You never really know. I'm sure no year came back to that first year and how successful they were as a team. But 36, 28, you'll take that. As a Lions fan, most people will take that every single day. Now, ultimately, if we really are being honest here, there's no difference between, you know, 9-7 and seven and not making playoffs and not winning the Super Bowl, right? It's Super Bowl or bust, for pretty much for the most part. But as Lions fans, we've never been to one. So, you know, we jump on this. And, and that's okay. It's okay to jump on the good record. So I completely understand that argument alone is what some people will look at and they'll take that and be like, look, there's no other, nothing else that's necessary. You were 36 and 28, all right? You were above 500 for four years as an average. This guy should have gotten more time. So I think there's, it's very difficult to, you know, argue that point. And I think, you know, it's a very for, fair point to make, especially when you see where the Lions are as an organization. But this isn't comparing Matt Patricia to Jim Caldwell, at least not this video. Because one reason I can't compare, to be honest with you, is because Matt Patricia only been here for two years. And, you know, who knows if he's the answer. I think many people believe he's not the answer. But he has only been here for two years and four games. And personally, you know, his quarterback being out for half the season last year really messed up the stats offensively, at least. Defensively, not really, but offensively for sure. So it's hard for me to compare statistically Matt Patricia to Jim Caldwell because, you know, I mean, he hasn't been here near really that. I mean, it's only, when his career is over, I think we can compare, right? When his head coaching career is over with the Lions, I think we can compare. And, uh, you know, obviously Caldwell will probably win a lot of categories. But as of right now, I'm not going to do that because it, there's just not enough for me to really look at here. But what I did want to do is look at Jim Caldwell because to me, the answer is a guy that continues to build, that continues to progress. And like Stephen Tullock said, had you on the right track. Like some people said, like Dan Orlowski said, this team was made to progress, not regress. Uh, so I want to see progress, progression, right? And obviously the Lions never got back to 11 to 5, but there can still be progression as a team, right? What did you do as a team? Well, Jim Caldwell comes in in 2014, and he takes over a Jim Schwartz team that just went 7-9, and nine, and a big reason I think he was fired is because that division wasn't very good, and the Lions had the opportunity to win that division, and they didn't. So I think that was a huge reason that he ultimately was fired. Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell comes in from Indianapolis, where he spent a few years as their head coach. You know, he stepped in, uh, took over a Super Bowl team with Peyton Manning. First year, they win their first 14 games. First 14. Uh, they end up, like, sitting their starters. They lose the next two. They lose in the Super Bowl that year. So that's his first year as a head coach. It was, like, the rookie it was like the record for the best uh best head coaching i think record okay i'm messing this up best head coaching record as a rookie head coach it was the best right it's, it's in the record books or something and then his next year right they come back they take a little bit of a dip 10 and 6 and then this final year um ultimately his final year they start off 0 and 13 they have to go with a backup quarterback because peyton manning's hurt you know remember the peyton manning could have been the mvp kind of deal well that's because you know he was hurt so they went 2 and 14 that year and uh they let him go 
Then the Lions interview four people. Jim Caldwell is the one they decide to hire, whether or not he's their first choice, but they decided to hire Jim Caldwell back in 2014. And he took over a 7-9 Jim Schwartz team that honestly wasn't very bad, and they did add some really good talent to that team, but it wasn't that bad. If you look at Jim Schwartz's team, they were 7-9, uh, they finished third in the division, but again, if they would have won this division, he probably wouldn't have been fired. It's the fact that it was not very good and you lost the division. They were 13th in scoring, they were 6th in yards, total yards, they were 5th in offensive plays, uh, they were top 10 in yards per play, 5.7. So they were pretty good when it came to the offensive stats. Uh, they were 20 seconds in, 20 second in yards per carry, which is obviously below league average. They were 17th in total rushing yards, and uh, they were third in total passing yards, third in the league. So as you can see, top half of the league in a lot of categories offensively. Defensively, uh, not as good, but not completely awful. 15th in scoring, 16th in total yards, 5th in defensive plays, 24th in yards per play, 21st in turnovers, 1st First in third down conversion percentage allowed, 30.3. That's incredible. And also second in red zone percentage allowed. Uh, however, they were 20th in yards per carry allowed, 4.2, and 23rd in passing yards total. So as you can see, you know, kind of middle of the pack, some really good standout stats. Offensively, they were above average for sure. And without a doubt, they're above average. Uh, but again, 7-9, and nine, you know, it's not good enough. So, you know, he ended up getting fired. So it wasn't like he took over some scrub team. Well, Jim Caldwell is a player's coach. He's the definition of a player's coach. If you listen to Jim Caldwell's interview, which is a while ago with Glover Quinn, Jim Caldwell said that when he comes to a team, he doesn't look to change things and, you know, look to how he can get his guys in there. Jim Caldwell said that he comes in and he looks at the guys and says, these are my guys, right? These are my players that we're going to build and we're going to be successful with. That's how Jim Caldwell does things. And that's what he did. He came to Detroit, he took the guys that were there, and he made them very successful. And in his first year, I mean, things were just looking great, especially on the defense side. The offense, not as much, but defensively, they were one of the best defenses that Detroit has ever seen. Is this the best defense that the Lions have ever seen? They were third in points allowed, second in yards, sixth in total plays defensively, fourth in yards per play, eighth in turnovers, ninth in third down conversion percentage allowed, and uh, 17th in red zone percentage, first in run defense, only allowing 3.2 yards per carry, and 13th in passing defense, uh, 3,700. So you can see pretty much top half in every single category and first in run defense, right? This defense was extremely good in 2014, which is kind of weird. Can I just point this out that if you get like an offensive minded coach to defense, great. You get defensive minded coach to offense, great. It, it doesn't, I don't know. It, it's just goofy. But now let's move to the offense side of the ball. His first year, not bad. 22nd in scoring, 19th in yards, 11th in plays, 22nd in yards per play, 30th in rushing yards per carry, 28th in total rushing yards, and 12th in passing yards. So you can see the D offense definitely got worse. Uh, they actually got worse in every single category. They got worse in every category except for turnovers. The Lions turned the ball over 34 times in 2013 with, with Jim Schwartz. Under Jim Caldwell, the Lions got worse in every single offensive statistical category except for turnovers where they where they really improved to only 20. The Lions offense was a little bit different with um, Jim Caldwell and Matt, Matt, Matthew Stafford when Jim Caldwell took over. But defensively, they were better at pretty much everything except for third down percentage and red zone percentage allowed. They were pretty much better at everything in 2014. So that's a great step. I mean, that's where you start. You took over a team. You made the defense better. The offense got worse, but you're 11-5. You end up losing the division. You lose to the Packers and you lose in the first playoff game, even though game was whack. I'm saying right now it's pretty rigged. But anyways, the question is, does this team progress? He has three more years as a head coach. Does this team get better? And I think this is where the argument can come back if you're saying, look, he didn't deserve, he deserved to have more of an opportunity. And I think that's where Sue says this. And I think they make sense in saying, hey, maybe if he gets more years, then this team could still have him as head coach and maybe they're doing big things now. And again, I'm never going to argue that point because I think that's a great point. I think that's been one of the biggest problems with Lions organization is they don't let things build. And I think some of that is that we haven't been historically successful. So as Lions fans, we are so desperate to see a success right away that when it's not there, we just want to move on, okay? We want to get something even better. Unfortunately for him, the reason it kind of had to move on was because of unfortunate circumstances. But he then, 2015, right? You're coming off this 11-5 year, you're feeling good. And unfortunately, they lost some very big pieces that offseason, like the Donna and Sue, uh, Nick Fairley, Reggie Bush. They lost some big pieces this offseason. And in 2015, they got much worse. They were 7-9. and nine. Um, Defensively, they took... I mean, they just fell completely apart. They weren't really good at all defensively the next year. 23rd in points, 18th in yards, 
10th in plays, not bad. 22nd in yards per play, 26th in turnovers. Their down conversion percentage was 24th, 29th in red zone percentage, 20th in rushing defense, and 15th in passing defense. Only one category, and again, these aren't by ranks, these are by the stats. Only one category that they improve, and that was in passing defense from 2014 to 2015, and that's total yards. Everything else, they got worse. They got worse defensively everywhere else. So after this great year, all of a sudden, they're below average. It's like, what the heck happened? That 2014 was a great year for Jim Caldwell, right? That, that's the kind of welcoming that you want. The offense needs to improve, but the defense looks great. So what I wanted to do was this. Okay, Jim Schwartz was fired. I wanted to compare Jim Schwartz's final season stats, 2013, to all of Jim Caldwell's stats in his tenure. Again, I can't really do Patricia until his career is over, but I can do Schwartz in his final year because he was fired this year. And I think this team wasn't too bad. And Schwartz, honestly, you know, kind of picked the lines back up from 0-16, took him to a playoff appearance, and now had him at 7-9. Maybe you can make case that Schwartz needed more time. But Jim Schwartz, you know, I want to compare all of his offensive stats that year and all of his defensive stats to every single year with Jim Caldwell's tenure. And that's exactly what I do. Then so we really can't compare any of Matt Patricia's teams because all the teams we compare for Matt Patricia would be the 2020 team, which is four games, the 2018 team, which was his first year, or the 2019 team, which half was with a backup quarterback. And again, this isn't Patricia versus Caldwell video. This is, is Caldwell the answer? So I thought the best thing to do would be to compare Jim Caldwell, his four years, 14, 15, 16, 17, statistically, to Jim Schwartz's final year as the Lions head coach. Because Jim Schwartz was fired. So he must have not been doing well enough. He was fired because they didn't win that division. So you would think that if Jim Caldwell's the answer, you would think they would improve, right? They'd be better than that 2013 team. So I wanted to compare all of those stats, all right? And now this is going to be confusing. You can look at the numbers if you want, but there's so many numbers that I... I can't read them all. You will have no idea what I'm talking about. I honestly, this is the second time I'm doing this because the first time I completely lost myself. But here we go. All right. I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. So basically, starting with the offense, there is eight, there are seven categories that we are going to be looking at. All right. For every year, seven categories. The categories are this. Scoring. Yards. Plays. Yards per play. Yards per carry total rushing yards, and passing yards. Those are the seven categories that we are going to be looking at, all right? The seven categories for, you know, those four years. So seven times four, because we're looking at four years for Jim Caldwell is 28, all right? And we're comparing all of those, all of those stats, those four years, to the 2013 Jim Schwartz team, okay? In 2013, we'll talk about Jim Schwartz's numbers. Let's take a look at it. In 2013, Jim Schwartz's final year's line set coach, lines were 13th in scoring, 6th in yards, 5th in plays, 7th in yards per play, 8th, 22nd in, in yards per carry when it came to rushing, 27th in total rushing yards, and 3rd in passing yards. But they also had 34 turnovers, okay? Now, turnovers we're going to do separate, and I'll tell you why in a second because it's easier like that. So, aside from turnovers, that was the Lions offense in 2013. Now, I'm not comparing these by ranking. We're going by numbers here, not the ranking. So, we're not looking at 13th versus 14th because that's not fair because, you know, it depends what the other teams are doing. We're going by the numbers, okay? So, we're going by 395 versus 396. That's what the numbers we're going by. So, if you take a look and you take a look at all of Caldwell's years and you compare those seven categories all over the four years, which is 28, out of the 28 potential stats that he could have beat Jim Schwartz in. I want to make this clear that we are also going to be looking at where these ranked in the rest of the league, right? Where they top half in the league. We're also going to be doing that as well after we go through the Schwartz versus Caldwell, because I think that's also important to see how we compare it to the rest of the league then instead of just looking at what Schwartz compared to, right? So we're also going to look at how they ranked in the league and how many times they were in the top half and how many times they were in the bottom half. Also, I know the paper, the handwriting is awful. I'm sorry, my handwriting is terrible, but I just think this is the best way to do it. The S means Schwartz, C means Caldwell, okay? All right, get back to it. In the 2013 year, they only won one category. They only won one category in four years versus Jim Schwartz's 2013 offense. Only one. Now get it. Now get this. They also did win, however, every single turnover battle, okay? They had less turnovers than Jim Schwartz's 2013 team every single year. That was the biggest difference because Jim Schwartz's offense was much different. It was much more, I mean, uh, Jim Collins' offense was much different. There's a lot of shorter passes, right? They were trying to limit Stafford's picks, things like that. But you can see... Their offense statistically really got way worse under Jim Caldwell, but the difference is they didn't turn the ball over. Okay, well, let's step over to the defensive side of the ball. Once again, seven categories. The seven categories are this. Points allowed, yards allowed, plays, all defensively plays, yards per play allowed, total turnovers forced, all right, third down conversion percentage allowed, red zone conversion percentage allowed, run defense in terms of yards per carry, and passing defense, total passing yards allowed. Those are the 
one, two, three, nine categories that we're going to be looking at for the defense side of the ball. Nine categories, which means there's a total of 36 potential, you know, uh, winnings here. 36. Let's finish up this comparison between Jim Schwartz and Jim Caldwell, and then we'll get into him compared to the rest of the league because I think that's more important than just the Jim Schwartz one. But I just want to do it just for a little bit of reference. So now looking at the defense for Jim Caldwell against Jim Schwartz's defense. So 2013 against 2014, 15, 16, and 17 out of a potential 36 points because there's nine categories, four years. 16, excuse me, 12 of those points, only 12 of those points, which is 33%, go to Jim Caldwell. And six of those 12, six of the 12, half of them came in that 2014 defensive season, his first year there. The only ones that Schwartz beat him in in 2014 were plays, third down conversion percentage allowed, and red zone percentage allowed, all right? So only 12 of the 36 potential points, only 12 of the 36 potential points, Jim Caldwell gets here versus that 2013 defense. But that's that's beside the point. Why don't we compare him to the rest of the league? Because it's not comparing Jim Schwartz to Jim Caldwell. We're comparing him to the rest of the league. So if you compare him to the rest of the NFL, all right, which is what we're going to do here. Times they were in the top half of the league. Let's start off with the offensive side of the ball. How many times were they in the top half of the league offensively out of these 28 potential points out of these seven, carries, uh, seven categories for the four years? Only seven times were they top Top half in the league in the ranking so 16 or better only seven times and only one of the four times were they top half in the league in scoring and on the defensive side of the ball out of again a potential 36 only 16 of the 36 times were they in the top half of the league defensively by these categories only 16 of the 36 so again below half of the time so I thought I would compare those. But what's the most important is the win and loss. And I think what's most important offensively, because turnovers is what we didn't look at, right, between Jim Schwartz and Jim Caldwell, is that Jim Caldwell's team always had less turnovers. What I see here is that Jim Caldwell had his players disciplined, they bought in, they believed in him, and even when their defense wasn't great, there were some years where they had a lot of turnovers. When I look at Jim Caldwell's tenure with the Detroit Lions, there's a couple of pros and there's a couple of cons that I see from this, okay? Like, for example, the only thing that does matter is wins and losses, right? And he had this great win-loss record. So honestly, you could just take that and say, here you go, 36-28, we are good. Like, this team was good. He, you know, he should have got, got more time, right? Jim Caldwell was the answer because we were winning over half of our games. And I think that's fair, and you could just go with that, and you could run with it, right? And obviously, players bought into him, players believed in him, and they found a way at the end of games to win, right? 16 fourth quarter comebacks. And I know like the Lions haven't seemingly had some of that great luck with uh, Matthew Stafford and Detroit Lions right now. And they've had opportunities, right? This to drop pass by Swift. It just seems like the Lions are super unlucky right now. But there's still 16 fourth quarter comebacks with Jim Caldwell. Eight in 2016. Eight fourth quarter comebacks in 2016. All right, the Lions have just haven't had that luck recently. But that's a big deal because that's the players buying in, the players finding a way to finish off the games. And that's huge. I think that's something that you could look at and say, hey, look, they finished off games. They knew how to win. They knew how to close games out. They knew how to come back and win. Or you could just say that, you know what, it's kind of just like, hey, we've met in positions to do that here and we just didn't do it. But I think also some of the concerns maybe is that some things just didn't seem to progress. It didn't seem like the defense ever really got back to the level that it was at, not really even close. Offensively, they were never great. There was never some crazy offensive year that I felt like the first eight games with the Lions with Daryl Bevel last year were really good. Um, I don't think we ever saw a year with that with Jim Caldwell. He didn't make Matthew Stafford seemingly better. He threw a lot less picks. It was a different type of offense, though, for sure. Um, but there was also some concerns with the run game, right? The run game never was good. I mean, we had a terrible rushing attack, and it never seemed to be fixed. So I think with Jim Caldwell, what he had is he was able to run a team. He was able to get people to buy, buy into him. Okay, he was a guy that people wanted to play for. But I think he may have also somewhat maybe lacked to necessarily build a team and fix the big problems. I think maybe that was something. And maybe if he had more time to work with Bob Quinn, they would have figured those things out. Maybe they would have fixed those because he did have to deal with two general managers. So let me know your thoughts, comments below, man. Was he the answer? I don't know. I think you can make an argument for both sides, to be honest. So I'm not going to go either way. But I just would like to see the Detroit Lions give coaches opportunities uh, to build their team. You know, I've been arguing that for a very long time. And I think you can make that case with our guy now, with the guy before in Caldwell, and with a lot of former other head coaches. I will leave you guys with this. In my response to the whole Matt Patricia situation, which everybody has been kind of bringing up as to with, you know, there was no work to do. I personally disagree with that. I think there was work to do. Again, if you're not winning a Super Bowl, there is work to do. And it's not like the Lions you know, have ever really done anything. I mean, it's not like we have won playoff games or anything like that before. So there is still work to do for this Lions organization. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is a whole history that we are trying to change here, right? Winning playoff games, being successful. And obviously it doesn't look like right now that we're on the pace to do that. But I'm not disagreeing with in terms of that. Yeah, there was some work to do, I think, when he got here. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching and I'm out. Are you kidding me right now? I had to put my helmet on. For this one. Are you kidding? Look at this. Look at all these members.
What? What? Yo, hey, shout out to all the members, man. Look, look how many all pro members there are. Like literally, it's the whole screen, dog. This is crazy. The patrons, of course, the Hall of Fame members, man. Y'all got the gold color. It's kind of yellow, but it's supposed to be gold. Shout out to all the members, man. If you want to be a part of this, all you got to do is join the channel. But there are perks that come with it. Stay locked in the community tab if you are a member because that's where a lot of information comes out. I appreciate all of you. What?